knows who you are. <laughs> you know, that's that's that, that's it, that's it was professional. Impactful name for me because it was my second skateboard I ever got, and yeah. it's a big orange, bright orange, clunky board with. Yeah. Remember, it had the concrete that was blown out. Like it was exploding out, and then it had it said Jeff Phillips, and it had the the Sims print on the top of the board. So th this is this will date me, I guess, and this is goes back to when I had been part of it and or left or made the actual active decision to stop skateboarding. <laughs> was the big deal was the Jeff Kendall Street model from Paolo Peralta, if I'm mis not mistaken, is that correct? Uh, Santa Cruz. Was it? Oh, yeah. Santa Cruz. Okay, yeah. but Santa I do Cruz. remember the Bones Brigade. Uh, videos and all that sort of stuff and all those dudes that were part of that we thought they were that was the coolest thing we've ever <laughs> fucking seen in our lives you know I, am I supposed to drop F-bombs or is no, it, you can okay, do whatever you like do I get paid extra for some <laughs> let's see um, why did you choose pop music uh, you know I think it was pretty much a middle finger to my parents I think that uh the whole concept of it was any type of musical instrument, which I had been force fed for the previous 10 years of my life since I could remember being stuffed at a piano or stuck behind a violin or something like that and being told to practice for hours on end. Um, I would found an instrument that enabled me to, they couldn't touch that. They couldn't have that. You know what I mean? And Maybe I just happened to run into these guys. I don't even remember really how it happened, other than they were in my jam room, and these guys were playing stuff at, at 10 times the speed I'd ever heard. I said, well, what about this? And I tried it and it worked, you know what I mean? And that's how that started. So I gravitated towards it because it was something that wasn't being, not only by my parents, but my you know older friends and stuff that were, you know, because... I wasn't going to be tall enough, I didn't have long enough hair, I didn't have enough money, I didn't have enough this and none of that. And here comes this whole thing, this whole everything or whatever it was, where none of that matters. You know? It's more of an attitude. And we had plenty of that to go around. You know? <laughs> Maybe that had something to do with it, I don't know. Um, in the uh, area, Sacramento area, Davis area, who were your favorite bands at that time? From uh, 85 to, to 87? Cool. Uh, there was a bunch of different groups that we tried to, I guess at the time for lack of a better word, to network with um, mostly for the Bay Area. We even um, who wrote the songs in, in the Chromancy? Primarily, uh, I would say Jason and Billy did. Okay. Uh, the lyrics? I, I, did, I did some lyrics. I did parts of songs, and that was not really a point of contention at the time, but I think at the time I, I ended up writing a couple of my own songs and bringing them in because I knew that they didn't want it, or not, I'm not sure about they or they didn't or whatever. I don't know who did what, but there, there was not as much collaboration that was wanted, you know? That's at least what it felt like. So I said, okay, screw it. You do your own thing, I'll do mine. And if, if it works, it, it does. And if it doesn't, no, no harm, no foul, you know? Um, I know that in a, a couple of different times, the, some of the more classical training came into play to where I was arguing with, well... That's not really in the scale, so you're gonna have to like move this note over here, and that's gonna work a little better, and you know things like that. It's it interesting because yeah. yeah, when I listen to it now, I'm like, you guys are really right on it. It was fun, and that I think that the thing about it was that we just the the, the three of us really resonated really well with each other in this the ability to play fast, and the ability to to play together, and know what the other one was thinking. I found a lot of uh, difficulty in the last 30 years of playing music is that um, you really need to it, it's it's definitely a ball game it's a, it's a game of of playing catch or uh, or gave cat as mouse if you were I, I would think that maybe one of the most the, the coolest statements that doesn't pertain to music but makes me feel like this person knows what a musician's going through was when Wayne Gretzky, when they asked him, how, why, are, why are you so good? What, what makes you different than all these? Why are you the great one, you know? And he said simply that I'm just going where the puck's going to be. I'm not being told where it's going to go. It's, I'm going where I know it's going to be, and I'm most of the time right. And that's kind of how I felt with a lot of these different things, especially with those two guys, where it's like we would kind of figure out where the other person's doing it, and we would guess, and a lot of times we'd be right. 
And you know real quick, as a musician, and probably with anything else, music, uh, uh, sports, art, work, whatever, you know when it works, and you know when it doesn't. Do you know a lot of uh, people from Davis that have become really good athletes, or really good musicians, or artists? Um, I've, I've worked with a whole bunch of the musicians who have become what you'd call popular. I don't know if they've become successful, because that's dependent... What, what's your definition of successful? I know, I, knew, I know that, uh, I think, I could be wrong about this, but as far as football, wasn't Mark Hicks? He's a little older than us. He was, didn't he go pro at one point or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I think we had Kevin O'Brien or something yeah. that eventually played for the Jets. Yeah, exactly. Like and there's a lot of... been some of the swim people or track people or whatever from Davis. With twenty twenty hindsight now, I, I you know found out that the mid-90s were, was, were the years where... Money was just being vomited from record companies to <laughs> anything that might have legs that could, or that could swim out of a lake and potentially slither for a while, you know. And can you tell me and, how and you so and there, the guys from the Chrome Sea all met? I, I, I the, my best memory is somehow the, the the two guys who were doing this style of music somehow got connected with me and they were in my jam space and we just started playing. And we played for hours, playing the same stuff over and over as fast as we could. And that was really what it was about. It wasn't necessarily about being good. It wasn't about anything. It wasn't about trying to sing. It was about how fast can we play this stuff? And can we make it good, you know? Because there, again, there wasn't a lot of stuff like that. Certainly not around here. At least we didn't feel like it was like that, you know what I mean? Um, and so that's kind of how it started, how they got over, how they found out who I was and vice versa. I don't remember. I do remember our singer. We ended up putting an ad in some sort of local zine having something to do with one of the little punk clubs that ended up showing up around town. Uh, and he was a Dixon kid. And uh, we just, he was interesting because he was the one guy that, unlike everybody else, everybody sounded like, you know, uh, Grover from Sesame Street or the Cookie Monster or whatever, <laughs> and this guy was trying to sing. It's like, wow, what's this all about, you know? And it kind of, that's, that's why we went with him, you know? And we had, didn't know this guy at all, but he's still one of my better friends, and I've been in multiple musical projects with him. He's a great guy. Tell me the names of everybody. That uh, Jeff Haggerman was a singer. Billy Taylor, or at the time Hines, was a guitar player, and he's the one that really got me connected with it. And Jason Rosenberg was a bass player. Okay. Yeah. And how long were you guys together? The band. I think um, it was just basically mm. pro a relatively short time in the grand scheme of things. I think I think I think everything started in '87, and I believe it ended late '90, maybe '91. I don't really know. I don't. It wasn't. It didn't end well. I can tell you that. But uh, we're all really good friends now, and I mean. Life gives you priorities that don't, don't allow you to hang out with each other too often, but we still try to keep in touch.